Uh, so we have this, uh, everything I was talking about so far was just sort of constants between one value of stress and one value of strain, right? But we have, in general, nine stress components, nine strain components, and again, if we're talking about Cauchy's stress, then we can reduce that to six, right? There's it's only six stress components and six strain, strain components that are unique. And so we have a relationship between those. Um, and so I'm going to write down a vector now of the, uh, of the unique stress components. Right? So sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 3, 3, sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 3, sigma 2, 3. And so we have this matrix of constants that relate the stress to the strain. And the strain is sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 3, 3, 2, sigma 1, 2, 2, sigma 1, 3. To epsilon, I keep saying sigma, epsilon, right? And so, how big is this matrix in general? Six by six. So how many how many entries are in the matrix? Thirty six. Right? So there's thirty six entries in the matrix. But it turns out that. Uh, so we've, we've already, just by writing it this way, we've assumed the symmetry of the stress tensor and the symmetry of the strain tensor. And it turns out there's another argument we can make due to the, the um, just due to thermodynamics, actually, that allows us to reduce, in general, this down to 21 independent components. 21, in, 21 independent co constants. So that means to fully populate this thing in general, right, you have to do 21 experiments. Tw or you have to take, say, 21 separate measurements, right? Because we, we already saw that you, know, you can get Young's modulus and Poisson ratio in one test. Right? And so you know, the idea here would be if the material is, has no planes of symmetry, you're going to have a different Young's modulus, right? If I if I pull the material in this way versus if I pull it in this way, I'm going to have two different Young's modulus measurements. We're going to have two different Poisson ratio measurements, right? Uh, this is apparent in, you know, trying to, like a material that you're familiar with, like would be wood, right? You know, wood along the grains is very stiff, right? But transverse to the grains is not, not as stiff. This is why guys can like karate chop through, uh, you know, big stacks of wood because they're they're going against the grain or uh, like across the grain. Right? If they tried to chop the ends of the board, they would never be able to do that. Break their hand. Uh, so, wood is a pretty good example of a material that's like uh, transversely isotropic. So. If you have a transversely isotropic you, you can, material, you can, have, you can reduce this all the way down to five constants. Right? So if you go from 21, so the most you can ever have, like a fully anisotropic material, with no planes of symmetry, would be 21. Right? Um, but then if you have, say, transversely isotropic material like wood, then you could drop it down to five constants. And if you have infinite planes of symmetry, so it doesn't matter you know, which direction you orient the sample. And for the most part, steels are pretty good examples of, of I mean, they're not, steels technically are also a, a little bit anisotropic, but they depend, depend, you know, if you test the sample, it depends on how the, ma the material was made, how it was rolled. But, the, but that dependence is usually pretty small, so that like, isotropy is a good, um, a good assumption. And so in this class, we're only going to deal with isotropic materials. And with that, you can 
reduced it down to two independent constants. So while this, this matrix is not, that doesn't mean that all the other entries are zero. It just means they're all related. There's only two independent entries, you know, two independent constants, and all the others, you know, are just some function of those two independent. That's isotrop. And so the, here's what that matrix would look like actually for just using two independent constants. In this case, Young's modulus and Poisson ratio. So here's actually what that matrix looks like. Right. So we'll start there next time.